This video will discuss the mechanism of unimolecular reactions in chemical kinetics. So most reactions occur through the collisions of two molecules, or what are called bimolecular collisions. So the question here is, how do unimolecular reactions occur? So the example we're going to use is the isomerization of 2-butene. So there's two isomers of 2-butene. We have the Z isomer, which you might call the cis isomer, and the E isomer, or what you might call the trans isomer. And there's some observed rate constant, which determines the rate at which this reaction occurs in the gas phase. So there's two different regimes here. One where we have high concentration of our reactant, where the rate is equal to a rate constant times Z, or its first order at high concentration. At low concentration, the rate is V equals to some different observed rate constant times the concentration of our reactant squared. So it's second order at low concentration and first order at high concentration. And similarly, we know that the activation barrier for this energy, for this reaction, is much, much greater than the thermal energy. It's much greater than KT. So additionally, where does that energy come from? So this puzzle was solved by a scientist named Lindemann. So Lindemann proposed the mechanism that we have a two-step process by which these reactions occur. The first process is we have our reactant plus some molecule M, and then there's a reversible uh, process here where we go forward with a rate constant of K1 or backward with a rate constant of K minus one. And Z plus M produces Z star plus M so this Z star is what we call an activated molecule. It's a molecule where after its collision with M, it produces this activated molecule, which is higher in energy and thus more suited to go through the reaction. This molecule M here is just some collision partner. This could be another molecule of Z, or it could be another gas entirely. Then in step two, we take our activated molecule and with the forward rate constant K2, we convert to our product. Okay, so what is, the, uh, what is the reaction rate at which we produce our product? So DE DT equals, the way we produce that is K2 times the concentration of Z star, which is equal to the observed rate constant times the concentration of Z, our initial reactant. All right, so what is the rate of change for Z star? So DZ star DT, what are the ways we produce it? We can produce it in step one, where we have a rate of K1 times Z times M for that first elementary reaction. And we consume Z in star in the second step, where we have minus, or sorry, we can consume Z star by going backwards to step one where we have minus K, or sorry, K minus one times Z star times M, concentration of all of those, where the, these are the reactants in the reverse reaction. We can also consume Z by going forward in step two, minus K two times Z star. And if we use the steady state approximation, we'll say that this rate of change of our intermediate here, Z star is an intermediate, the rate of change of our concentration of our intermediate is equal to zero. So if we set this equal to zero, we can solve this equation for the concentration of Z star. So rearranging all of this for Z star, Z star is equal to K1 times Z times M over K2 plus K minus one times M. So going back to the rate at which we produce our product, E, the E isomer, DE DT equals K observed times the concentration of Z, which equals K2 times the concentration of Z star from this line back here. And substituting in the concentration of Z star, this gives us K2, K1, Z, M over K2 plus K minus one times M. So looking at what corresponds here, we have a linear dependence on Z in this here. So K observed is everything else in this equation that isn't Z. So our observed rate constant for treating this as a single reaction step 
the observed rate constant is K2 times K1 times the concentration of M over K2 plus K minus 1 times concentration of M. So let's look at some limiting cases here. At a high concentration of M, we said the reaction should be first order. Well, if the concentration of M is large, then K minus 1 times M is much, much greater than K2. And K2 plus K minus 1 times M is basically K minus 1 times M. So that means we have K observed equals K2 K1 times M over K minus 1 times M. And the M's are going to cancel. We're going to get the observed rate constant of K1 K2 over K minus 1. At low concentration of M, where we said the reaction should be second order, we have that K1 times K minus 1 times M is much less than K2. So K2 plus K minus 1 times M is just K2. So we get K2, K1, M over K2, which ends up just giving us K1 times M for our K observed. All right, so our rate of reaction at high concentration, we take K observed and we multiply it uh, times Z, as we said there. So we get K1, K2 over K minus 1 times Z which is our first order dependence there on the concentration of Z, as we saw at high concentration. At low concentration, our observed rate constant is K1 times M. But remember, the identity of M doesn't matter. M can be even another molecule of Z that helps it to reach the activated complex. So if we say this M is Z, then K observed is K1 times Z and the low concentration is K observed times Z, or K1 times Z times Z, the rate of reaction at low concentration is K1 times Z squared, or a second order dependence on Z. So Lindemann proposed this reaction whereby unimolecular reactions occur by colliding with some partner to produce an activated complex, which then reacts. It results in this expression for our observed rate constant, which is consistent with the behavior that unimolecular reactions occur with a first order dependence at high concentration and a second order dependence at low concentration.